How's everybody doing? Thumbs up, thumbs down. So, so. Cool, that's great. It's good to see you. I today want to cover, I know yesterday I mentioned something about um, doing beans, but I really want to find the right bean for our lesson to give us a highlight of the bean family and a good thing, you know, for this time of year uh, as we're putting plants in the ground. And I decided that today, before we do beans, I wanted to cover one of my very favorite plants called oats. Very simple. I'm sure we all know what oats are, right? Can you shake your head if you know what oats are? Yeah, cool. I bet there's some things you don't know about oats and I want to teach you some of those things and then I want you to teach me some of the things that you know. Um, so I, for a very long time, I've always loved oatmeal, which I'm sure you guys know about, right? So the main way that I think most people are used to consuming oats are through eating oatmeal <laughs> in breakfast. And um, I've always loved oatmeal when I was a kid, all through growing up, it's like really easy to make. And as an adult in the last few years, I have learned to love it even more because of the type of plant it is and the other ways that you can use the plant as really, really wonderful, healthful medicine. Um, and some of the ways that it's used also in like farming and growing practices. So um, I want to, let's see, I'm gonna share this picture. I'm gonna share a, a simple botanical drawing of the oat plant and then I'm going to look for a show of hands for people to make sure I can see you over here. Make sure, um, okay, so uh, this is the botanical drawing of oats, and I want people to raise your hand uh, or put in the chat window um, what this reminds you of. Oh, sorry. I was going to say like a wheat. Like a seed, a grain maybe. Because oats is a grain, but it seems like they all look the same. I can't hear you. Sorry, I muted myself. Thank you. <laughs> Did you, does it remind you of anything? Um, I, I was going to say the same thing. He said. Reminds you of wheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, I like Liv's little wheat emoji too. That is, so it definitely, um, looks like wheat and it is a grain and it looks uh like what Jaden said it looks the same as as wheat because it is in the same family as wheat uh which is the the grass family so the grass family all looks very similar to the oat plant to the wheat plant um, other plants that are in the grass family are rice uh, and sorghum and rye and barley. Uh, and these are all grains that humans eat and that animals eat in a large quantity. And they have these um, hollow, they have hollow stems. They have these, their seeds all form at the end of their stalks and there's multiple seeds and multiple seed pods um, per plant. And they often get quite tall. Uh, they can be either annual or perennial. So <coughs> annual meaning you have to plant them every year. Um, 
from seed or maybe sometimes even planting them uh, twice a year in the spring and in the fall. And you can get sometimes, depending on where you live, you can get two crops. Uh, or they can be perennial. So there are some grasses that, like, you know, our common grasses that we grow in our lawns and some other perennial uh, rye and other things like that, that we plant one time and they'll come back year after year after year. So the oat or the grass family that oats are in has 12,000 species in it. It's a massive, massive family. So remember yesterday we talked about, um, yesterday we talked about the Brassica family, Brassicaceae. So the Brassica family in comparison, even though it has tons and tons of vegetables that we eat all the time, the Brassica family is much smaller than the grass family. And the grass family's Latin name is Poaceae. So I'm gonna type that in the chat. P-O-E-A-C-E-A-E, -E -E. Poaceae, boop. Um, and it um, is found all over the world. And the species that are in, Zia would like to tell you a little bit about the grass family. So, um, it's found all over the world and grass, uh, grasses are also 50% um, of all of the food that we eat as humans in the world. 50% of all of our calories come from species in the grass family of which oats are a part. And that means that it's a very, very important family. These are plants that we have been <laughs> cultivating that we have been growing out as food for allies you know plant allies for ourselves um, for a really really long time and they've been keeping us alive so does anybody know what the word ally means do you want to give me your definition of of that word sure yeah um like a companion or like someone you go places with like something like that. Oops, Jaden, you have a definition? Oh no, I was actually going to, but that was the exact same thing. A friend? Yeah, like yeah, something like an that. An enemy would be someone you are against, but an ally would be somebody that's on your side. Exactly, yeah. Somebody that's on your side. That's a that's a really good definition. Yeah, Liv. France was America's alley in the American Revolution. Okay, yeah, that's a great that's a good observation, a good comparison, an analogy for us. Um, so yeah, when I talk about allies or plant allies, I definitely am talking about them as you know being being my friend. These are plants that I have developed a relationship with over many, many, uh, many years of learning. They're plants that are, you know, the one, these plants that I'm teaching you about are plants that I have a personal relationship with that have helped me uh, through food and through medicine and just through like uh, improving my relationship with the earth, with the outside world. And uh, that's why I'm choosing to teach you about them because I think that they are, they're things that have been really important to me in, in terms of my growth and my learning over time. And um, they help to teach patterns, right? So patterns of um, the types of plants that, that we have out in the world that we can learn about. And if we're learning, in, if we're learning through patterns, we can learn many different types of plants much more easily, much more quickly. And uh, that's one of the ways that I like to teach people. Uh, it helps us to, you know, it, I feel like it, it really gets our brains working um, better. And uh, when, we're, when we're thinking about things in terms of, oh, this reminds me a lot of this other thing. I wonder why. Oh, it's because they're in the same family. I wonder what other similarities they have. Oh, they are really, they're grains. They're really healthy, calorie, 
dense, nutrient dense uh, when they're when they're in their whole form. So that's you know one of the things about the the grass family that I really like. Um, so talking a little bit more about the things that I love about oats. Uh, in the past few years, I have learned um, as a uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to see if I can show you a video, um, that I've never done this through zoom. So bear with me. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think Liv, hold on before I share this. Liv, do you have a question? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to try to share this little short video that I took a couple years ago when I was really developing my love of the oat plant. So this is me harvesting uh, oats when they are in flower, when they are referred to as milky oats. I'm going to talk to you about milky oats after I show you this video. All right, so that's my crazy dog, Rishi. I hope that video worked for you all. Um, it looked like it did. I was trying to trying to see your faces. Okay, so um, that is a small field of oats that uh, a few friends, a few of my best friends and I planted uh, a couple years ago. At uh, One of my friends lives on a farm and we were able to take a sh small area of one of the fields that they have there and plant oats. And we were planting them specifically for their medicinal purposes to get them uh, as medicine. And they're really, that was me harvesting them in their medicinal form. Um, I'm gonna show you this, <clears throat> this picture um, as I talk about their medicinal form. Oops. Make it bigger. There we go. So this is a picture of that same day. And the, um, this that you saw in my hand in the video is the flowering oat tops, which people refer to as milky oats. And when you pull them off, like I was doing in that video, and you squeeze the flowering tops in your hands, <laughs> this milky substance, this like white milky substance comes out of them, which is extremely nourishing for our nervous systems. And why might that be important? Why, why do we want to make sure that we have healthy nervous systems? Can anybody give me an answer for that? Um, Jaden, it looks like your hand is up. Yes. Um, like the nervous system helps you with, I wouldn't say everything, but a lot of things. So like, um, keeping it healthy, um, that's like, if you're scared, it reacts to your brain. Exactly. That's, that's a great explanation. Thank you for that. Yeah. So if you're scared your nervous system um, gets activated. And that is a, that's what we call a stress response, right? So if we're afraid, if we're scared, if we're angry, um, you know, if, if we're unsure of things, if something, something um, scary happens to us and then we're having memories of that scary thing, sometimes our nervous system gets, uh, also gets activated and our bodies are, full of these stress chemicals, these stress hormones. And um, sometimes people call that anxiety um, or, you know, just being scared is a, is a, good, is a good answer. So there are a lot of people um, who really need this medicine. There are a lot of people in our world 
who are very stressed out very often. Um, there are a lot of a lot of reasons why sometimes people get scared or feel scared, even if there isn't something that's really that scary happening, because maybe they think that something scary is going to happen. So oats in their natural like oatmeal form, like the form that we eat, um, or in this milky oat form, which is even more potent as medicine, um, are really good for helping people who are feeling anxious or feeling scared uh, or feeling sad with healing their nervous systems, with balancing their nervous systems and decreasing stress in their bodies physically and uh, emotionally. Um, so uh, it looks like Jaden has another question and then Liv asked a question in the chat. Um, Jaden, what's your question? We do um, oat straw exactly for um, anxiety. Yeah, so that's, that's great too. So you know about oats in your family a lot. That's great. Oat straw is also uh, the, the grass part of the plant after it dries, um, after the plant is um, fully mature and you har you harvest it for the the grassy kind of sh straw hay looking parts when it's when it's tall and you can also um you know grind that up or break that up into smaller pieces and make tea with oat straw so you boil water and then you put a little bit of the oat straw into it um i'm going to answer liv's question are the flowers rolled to get rolled oats actually the Flowers are early in the, the, a little bit early in the stage of uh, harvest. So you harvest the flowers to get milky oats medicine. You harvest um, when the plant gets more mature. When the plant gets more mature, um, you harvest uh, the seeds for your oats, for your grains, for, um, and also to make more seeds. Uh, to have more seeds for your um, growing out in future years. So to get rolled oats, people harvest, they wait until the plant is fully mature and it's starting to get like brown and dry and the seeds are set, they're, um, the seeds are fully mature and they're dried and they're hard. And then you would harvest kind of like, you could harvest by hand if you had a small patch like I did with the milky oats, or on like a large farm, people have large farm equipment where they come in, I believe, you know, combines and tractors and things that they come in and they can harvest everything all at once with really big machinery. And then there are, there's other machinery that rolls out the grain um, into the rolled oats form. So if you don't, if you're not eating rolled oats, uh, steel cut oats is another way that you can eat um that you can get them and those are that's a different machine that is cutting um that's cutting them into pieces and it takes longer for them to cook uh, i believe instant oats are just rolled oats that are cut into even smaller pieces um hold on one second i'm gonna see if zia will play on the ground for a minute Um, and if you eat, um, whole, like you can probably cook up, I've never done it, but you can cook up the whole oat seeds as well. It would just take a lot longer for them to cook. Um, and you can do the same thing with wheat, wheat berries, they're called, are the same, the kind of the equivalent of oat seeds. Um, so yesterday, uh, I actually planted some oats in my backyard. And I wanted to show you just a little bit like what this looks like. Um, because you can, if you're interested, if you have some land in your front yard or in your backyard for gardening and you wanna grow some oats, you wanna practice growing some grains or growing some medicine, it's pretty easy to grow. So I had just a very small bag left over of my oat seeds uh, from two years ago. And I planted them out yesterday morning before it rained in my backyard. And I have kind of a new backyard. I'm living in, in, a, in a pretty new house and it, I have a new garden that I'm kind of just 
doing from scratch here. Uh, and I can show you the small, this little small area and the way that I planted out my oats. So in the back corner of my yard, I took the, the handful, the little baggie of seeds that I have, and I made these little squares in the back corner of my yard. Uh, so oats like full sun. They really like to be in full sunlight. Uh, they can probably tolerate a little bit of shade. Um, this part of my backyard is the area that will get the most sun in the back corner. So I had enough seed to plant out these three, one, two, three little, um, basically like probably four foot square areas, more or less. And then I covered, you can probably see all the little tiny seeds in there, just scattered them around, just like throwing them out and trying to get them spread out pretty evenly. And I planted them, I planted a little bit heavily, um, generally like eight inches apart is what they kind of recommend, but I planted them a lot more closely together because some of the seeds will probably get eaten by birds before they germinate and they put out roots. Uh, some of them will probably get um, eaten when they're, when they're growing by other, cr other critters. Uh, so uh, I figured that that was probably a good spacing. Uh, Jaden, you have a question? Yes, one more. How many oats do you think you would get at a time? And I think your baby is very cute. <laughs> Thank you, Jaden. How many yeah. oats? How many oats do I think I would get at a time? Meaning, like from one plant or from that that little area that I planted out? What do you mean exactly? Um, it can be either one. Like, how many do you think you'll get there? But like in general, just in from one plant. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure. I bet I could probably find that answer pretty easily, but let's look back also at the picture that I shared earlier. Um, let's see. Just as like a rough estimate, I'm gonna share this picture with you again, and let's count together to see what this picture shows us. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, I would say this plant here probably has 60 to 70 seeds on it, or it would. It has probably 60 to 70 little milky oat pods, little flower pods, and that's like one plant, right? So 60 to 70 seeds. Let's uh, pull up that other picture that I just... That other picture that I also shared with you with the seeds in my hand. And let's do a comparison with that. So, mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this little zone is like 12 and we'll say maybe that's like 30. I bet in my hand I have about 60 or 70 right there. Um, so as just an example of kind of the, do you, do you know the word, like when I, if I say exponential growth, do you know what that means? No. They know, that's okay. So, um, one of the things that I love about seeds and about planting my own garden is that if I have, say I get 60 seeds from one oat plant and that 60 seeds is right here in my hand, and then I plant these 60 plants, or these 60 seeds, and get 60 plants, that means that I have 60 plants that are each gonna have 60 of their own seeds, right? So it's just like this amazing, like, this crazy growth that I get very quickly just by planting my own plants. Does that make sense? Um, so what I think that I probably planted out maybe like 300 or 400 seeds um, in, my, in my little patch in my backyard. Um, so, and I'm gonna harvest them for medicine. I'm not gonna harvest them for food this year, but someday I would love to have a, a giant field of oats for my own food um, because, 
you'll get a lot more medicine uh, from a small number of plants like I have than you would get food. I bet I wouldn't get more than like a few bowls of oatmeal from my little patch in my backyard, which is kind of crazy to think about. The, the amount of rice and the amount of wheat and the amount of oats that we eat takes a lot of space. And uh, I think that that's something that's important to think about too, when we're, the things that we're eating and, and the, the amount of, of land that it takes for us to eat the food that we eat is pretty crazy to think about. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I really love growing my own food because it gives me a perspective on, you know, how much the, the kinds of plants that I can grow in small spaces that will feed me a lot more um, is something that I like to think about too. Um, do we have other questions? Anything that you think that maybe I didn't cover that about the grass family or about grains or about maybe nutrition? Oh, I didn't talk about recipes. Oh, Liv, you have a question? Uh, sorry, I'm trying. There you go. Do they grow in the wild or do you have to plant them? Um, the oats that we have uh, that I grow are mostly cultivated. Um, there is probably, um, a, there are probably a, occasional times when say a bird will like scatter grass seed somewhere. And that's how we get very, we get different grasses that like pop up in places as weeds all the time because birds and other things kind of scatter them, spread them around. But these plants that we harvest uh, and that we grow every year as, as food and as medicine, for the most part, are harvested and gathered and used and you know, taken out of their fields so that they won't replant themselves. Um, you can sometimes find edible, so technically, every uh, grass is technically edible. Um, it doesn't mean we get very much food or nutri nutrition from them. Our bodies can't digest that very well the way that like cows, like do you, do you know that cows have multiple stomachs so that they can digest um, the grass that they eat in, the, in meadows? So we only have one stomach. We don't have the ability to get all of the nutrition and the fiber um, out of those plants the way that cows do. But that's why we eat the grains, the seeds, and then we cook them, we use fire, we use gas, we use you know, oil to heat up um, and, and break down and start digesting that food for us. Um, think of like your stovetop as like your first stomach, right? And then your second stomach is, is when you eat it. And then it's kind of like, you can think about like being like a cow, right? Um, so we have grasses that, um, so there are certain types of rye grass that can become weeds that I've seen because there are certain types of rye that are perennial that will self seed because maybe a bird has like scattered the rye somewhere and then that takes root. Um, and then, um, that will, will come back year after year. So you have a, a follow up question to that? Uh, yeah, so you talked a little bit about the like milk. So, does that taste good? Is it like sweet or how does it taste? Yeah, so the the milk, the milky stuff that comes out of the oats is um it is kind of sweet. I mean, it doesn't have much of a flavor, but if you had a ton of it, um if you made a tea like r with a really fresh milky oats, it would be sweet. Um, not like super sugary sweet, but it definitely would have a sweet flavor. Um, but speaking also of, of milk, making oat milk from oatmeal, from rolled oats, is something that's really easy to do. Um, and it's kind of fun too. You can, if you have a blender, and uh, I think it's one cup of oats uh, one cup of rolled oats to four cups of water in a blender for 40 to 45 seconds um, makes this kind of frothy oat milk. And then you use like a clean, just a, a clean t-shirt and you uh, pour it through, you pour that 
milk, that oats and water mixture through your clean t-shirt into another container. And it keeps all the oats inside the t-shirt and then the milky stuff comes out the bottom. And then you can drink that as like a milk substitute if you're lactose intolerant or if you run out of milk or if you just want to have some sort of nice nutritious, uh, nice nutritious drink. And you'll get a lot of the same benefits uh, for your nervous system in that drink that you would from the milky oats. So it might be a cool experiment to try at home while you're, while you're home during this time. I also like that you figured out how to raise your hand uh, using the Zoom app. How did you do that? Can you tell us so other people can do it? So there's this spot Well, I'm doing it from my iPad. Mm -hmm. So you hit more and then oh. there's a raise hand option and then you just click that. And so then, yeah, my Got hand you. is right. And then you can lower your hand. Yeah, and I can lower your hand when I see it pop up and I and I call on you. That's cool. If other people know, can see how to fi figure that out too, we can use that in the future. Thanks, Liv. Um, yeah, you got a question. Um, we also made the cookies. <laughs> yeah, definitely. How did I forget about oatmeal cookies? No, what other bad. things do you put in your oatmeal lemon cookies? Lemon balm. We oh, cookies. you made the lemon balm cookies. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. How were they? Good. Cool. Did but you? Also, I once made oat cookies too. Yeah, oat cookies are a really delicious way of also getting some of that nourishment from the oats. That's awesome. I'm glad you made lemon balm cookies. That sounds delicious. I haven't gotten to try yet because I don't have enough in my garden yet. Um. Yeah. What's your question or comment? Um, what, since we were speaking of um, cows and animals, I wanted to say, um, like, uh, camels, I want, they can, they also have, they have three stomachs, and they carry, in the desert, because they're in the desert, um, they carry 200, no, 2,500 pounds of water in their stomach. Camels? Mm-hmm. Well, that's super cool. And they're, yeah, they're, I think they're related. They're related to cows. Um, I don't know as much about animals as I do about plants. I should probably learn some more. But that's a great fact. Thank you. Cool. Um, Jaden, is your hand up? Forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, no problem. I am feeling like we're pretty much done with our lesson today. I'm running out of time in my little Zoom clock up here. Um, Liv said in the chat, I'm vegan, so I had oat milk before and I heard of ways to make it. Oat milk is the best non-dairy milk. Um, yes, it is really yummy. I have some oat milk in my fridge right now. Um, one more um, or question? Next time, can we learn about... Um Carol. About what? Carol. Carol. Oh, Sorrel. 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 Yeah. Sorrel? I found it in, um, on the side of my house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we could, yeah, that's in my list. Uh, the, I think it's someone lemon. called that lemon, somebody called that lemon leaves. Um, and yeah, I, it's, it, it's different. I'll do, I'll do Sorrel. Um, maybe not tomorrow, but definitely soon. I have to find it in my garden so I can show it to you guys. Any other questions? Jaden. In your next, in your next video, can you bring your baby? <laughs> She's right here. <laughs> she just gets sad because I'm not paying attention to her, and then it's hard for me to, for me to pay attention and teach you guys. <laughs> She's a little sad right now. She is cute, them. She is super cute. And she likes looking at all your faces. When, when, I, when I'm on a, a video call, she, she likes to look at the screen and she's like, wow. <laughs> it's good to see you all. I have a, a very long list of, of plants that we're gonna dig into. I wanna get into beans and I wanna get into, I'll do the, I'll do the soil and I'm gonna do some ground ivy and I'll get <laughs> 
and Zia would like to tell you how she's feeling. <laughs> all right, it's good to see you all. Thanks for being a really fun daily class for me and asking such great questions. I'll see you tomorrow.